Okay, let's take a look at doing ionic compounds with what's known as a multivalent metal. So we're going to write the formulas and name the compounds that are formed. And in this case, we're going to look at copper 2 and chlorine. So let's take a look at chlorine first. We find chlorine on the periodic table. It's always a minus 1. But if you look at copper, which is right here, number 29, and we zoom in, we'll actually see that copper can either be a 2 plus or a 1 plus ionic charge. So this is why we call it multivalent, because there's two possibilities. So we're doing copper 2 with chlorine. So the 2 right here with Roman numerals actually means that we're going to be using copper 2 plus. So we write it out, copper 2 plus, chlorine is the 1 minus. Now we can do our crisscross. So I will need two chlorines for every one copper. We write it out, CuCl2. Now, because we use copper with a 2 plus, when we go to name it, we will call it copper 2 chloride. So it's still ending with ide. We put parentheses or brackets and then the Roman numeral 2. So copper, 2, and this simply tells us that it was the 2 plus copper that we used. Next, let's look at iron, 3, with oxygen. Oxygen, 2 minus. Iron, which is number 26, has two possible charges. Iron can either be 3 plus or 2 plus. So our question says we want to make a combination of iron, 3, and oxygen. So when we go to do our crisscross, we will write iron, 3 plus, oxygen, 2 minus, crisscross. We will need 3 oxygens for every 2 irons. So we have Fe2O3. So this would be an iron oxide, and since we used iron with a charge of 3 plus, we call it iron 3 oxide. Iron, brackets, Roman numeral 3, oxide. So now we can also go the other way, which is to have a uh, chemical formula written out, and now we need to name it. So this is SN, which is tin, and this is chlorine, so this would be some kind of a tin chloride. Now if we look at our periodic table, okay, and we find tin, which is right here, tin can either be a 4 plus or a 2 plus. So here's how this works. I have tin, could be a 2 plus or it could be a 4 plus. We know that chlorine is a 1 minus. Now, we actually have 4 chlorines. So if I have 4 chlorines and each one of them is a 1 minus, that means we're going to have an overall charge of 4 minus. Now, when my tin combines together with my chlorine, we have to have the charges be equal, but opposite. So this is an overall charge of 4 minus. We have to use tin with a 4 plus because it's like a math equation. 4 plus put together with 4 minus goes to 0, which means the overall charge is neutral. So we have to use tin 4. Tin 4 chloride. So what is the name for the ionic compound? In this case, we've got Cr, which is chromium, S, which is sulfur, chromium, it's right here, could be a 3 plus or a 2 plus, sulfur is a 2 minus, so again we'll write it out, I've got chromium, now each chromium could either be a 2 plus or a 3 plus, but I have two of them, so we'll get back to that in a second, here's sulfur, each sulfur is a 2 minus, but I've got three of them, which means the overall charge is going to be 6 minus. That's my overall charge for all of my sulfurs, which basically means my chromiums need to be a 6 plus. We need to have these two charges be equal but opposites. So, if I have two chromiums, 2 times plus 2 would be plus 4. That doesn't work, but 2 times plus 3 gives me the plus 6 that we have to go with the 3 plus. So 2 times 3 is 6. That gives me 6 plus. This is my 6 minus. Put them together. They cancel the charges out, which means they're neutral. So we have to use chromium 3 
to make the compound chromium-3-sulfide.